Hello everyone, welcome back to the sideboard. I'm once again Glenn Jones, and I'm here with Howard Lyon. Hello. <laughs> uh, Howard is a magic illustrator, artist, done a lot of cards. Uh, Patrick Chapin was excited to hear that you've done the Vivid Lands, which he is a big fan of. Excellent. Having played to a significant tournament success. So really, we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, your career in magic, what you do with Magic Art, and uh, all of that good stuff. So Sounds good. First off, you're a fantasy artist. How did that come about? <laughs> you know, I, I've always wanted to. Um, I always wanted to be a fantasy artist. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of time playing Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. And um, I found that most of my time was spent drawing my character and drawing other people's characters. Uh, looking at the artwork of Keith Parkinson, and Larry Elmore, and Brom and Caldwell, and all those really wonderful early Dungeons and Dragons artists, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And uh, when a lot of the other kids were outside running around, playing around, I was inside drawing and um, just kept it up and, and it became a career. That sounds pretty awesome. How did you specifically land in Magic the Gathering as a uh, so contractor? I worked in the video game industry for about 13 years, uh, working as a concept artist and an art director. And uh, uh, it was a great experience, but at a certain point I realized I wanted to work for myself and start doing freelance artwork. And so I got a few pieces together and I submitted them to Paizo Publishing uh, and started doing work for Dragon Magazine and Dungeon Magazine. Ah. So I back when they were yeah, published no, I, and on I paper. Remember them, yeah. and, uh, uh, I took some of that artwork and was at Gen Con signing for um, another RPG that I had done work for. And Jeremy Jarvis was there and he was doing portfolio reviews. So I took my work in and showed it to him and fortunately he liked it. And uh, uh, the first set that I started to do work for was Lorwyn. And I think I've had work in just about every set since then. Um, there might be one that I don't, but I, I think it's been about every set. Pretty consistent. Uh, yeah. Do you have like a guesstimate on how many pieces? Or um, does it range just really I think, widely? I think I've done about 65, 65 paintings for Magic. I think that's about where I'm at. That's a pretty reasonable number. Um, other than the Vivid Lands, uh, Basil's Collar I know is one of yours also. Yes. A, uh, personal favorite, the Basil's Collar. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so what was, do you remember your actual first card that you did? Yes. Um, it was uh, Lamestide Weave. That was, yeah, that was, I, I believe that was the name of the card. That's the very first card. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I get the description for the card, the name for the artwork isn't, doesn't end up sure. being the same name as the card, and so I don't always remember uh, what the name of the card yeah, was. Yeah, but sometimes uh, change it later. Right. But yeah, the, um, uh, the art for Lorwyn was just right up my alley. It was a good set for me to start with. Um, and then um, magic as it changes with each set, as everyone knows, um, the look and theme changes as well. And sometimes it's it's pushed me a little bit out of what I would normally do, and other times it's been right up my alley. So it's, it's fantastic for artists. Um, you get a lot of freedom, but you also uh, do things that maybe you wouldn't have done otherwise. It's really dynamic, I imagine. It just pushes yeah, your boundaries pretty definitely. much. Definitely. That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, what about Lorwyn art specifically made it uh, something you were really interested in? You know, I had just come off of doing um, some children's titles in the video game okay. industry and uh, some work that I'm still very proud of, uh, the work that we did. We did some very high quality artwork. And Lorwyn had uh, kind of a, a light fantasy, whimsical feel. You know, I did. Um, like the Vivid Grove, and I did some pieces that um, I, the the trees all had the little swirly patterns yeah. <laughs> in them, and a lot of that kind of design. And so um, the the work was more realistic; it was a higher fantasy than what I I'd been doing for the video game work. But um, it was a good transition for me to make. Sure, sure. The Lorwyn world, obviously, like it was for you guys who played back then. You remember it was really light compared to the next set for Shadow Moor, where yeah. everything in the set turns darker. So obviously, That's right. that kind of whimsical feel. Uh, definitely caters. Yes. So here at events uh, and signings, what cards do you find yourself signing the most? Um, lately, Mana Leak. I've signed hundreds of Mana Leaks uh, this weekend. <laughs> uh, so lots of lots of those. Um, my card, Angel of Flight Alabaster, has been a very popular card. Um, I haven't had the proofs of those cards for very long and they're almost gone. So that's been a, that's been a popular card to sign as well. Mandalik's no surprise, uh, rotating soon and obviously a very played card, right? Uh, so, 
think I don't think any of us are actually surprised to hear right. that. Right. Usually, uh, if someone's going to bring one, they bring four yeah. or more. So, yeah. Yeah. lots of those cards. So, in addition to Magic, what kind of other uh, contemporary fantasy projects are you working on? Um, I have. I've, I've started to do more fine art for galleries, okay. and uh, I'm working on a series of pieces that. Um, are, I'd say, inspirational in nature. Um, I also started, um, I spent a year doing a series of private commissions. The pieces were all religious in nature. Um, so uh, that's been, it's been a neat, um, it's been a neat process. Uh, rather than doing um, 40 or 50 paintings in a year, uh, last year I did, I did 10 as far as the fine art pieces go. So I spent a lot more time on each piece and it was a good experience. It was, it was good to, to be able to refine my craft a little bit more and, and really focus on some of the pieces. Um, but uh, right now, over the next year, my focus, I'll, I'll be doing a lot of magic art, but sure. uh, um, I'll also be uh, doing a lot of work for a new gallery that I signed on to that uh, I'm looking forward to working with. That sounds awesome. Uh, so for Magic, what medium do you actually enjoy working with the most? I start out traditionally, I start out with pencil drawings, uh, doing little thumbnail drawings and then a more detailed drawing. And then I scan that into the computer. And uh, I use a program called Corel Painter. A terrific program. I use Photoshop a little bit, but mostly Painter. Um, with my fine art, I do everything in oils. And it's one of my goals over this next year to start doing more of my magic work in oils. Um, I find more and more I get people, as I've done more magic cards, there's more awareness of my work out there. And I'm getting more people asking for my originals. And uh, it's something that I enjoy doing. So I think I'll probably start doing more work in oils than I have in the past. Uh, I know I personally find just the idea of having originals out there very cool is sort of like, you know, a very much a piece of your own history that uh, right. exists for someone else. Right. Which, uh, it's kind of an irreplaceable sensation. Having a product that's done that uh, in, in oils change over time. You know, some it's something that yeah. uh, um, it's almost alive. You know, as as it ages and uh, there's texture to it uh, that that you just can't get with prints. Yeah, it's a it's a cool medium. I know we talked earlier with uh, Michael C. Hayes, who's also at right. the show, and he expressed a, a great fondness for oil as well. Yeah, he's very good. Uh, so, I always like to ask uh, any artist I get into the booth just any tip or lesson or life wisdom that they might have for an aspiring artist or a fantasy hobbyist or something like that who is looking to get into the industry, what they might do to give themselves a better chance. You know, I, I think if, you, if they're really a beginner, um, I think the thing that I can't stress enough is to draw every day. Uh, keep a sketchbook, take it with you, draw as much as you possibly can. Because drawing is going to be the foundation of anything that you do in the arts uh, with, with painting. Um, that uh, if your drawing is weak, uh, it's almost impossible for your painting to, to not be weak as well. Uh, so draw every day. Um, be very critical of your own work. Um, uh, look, at the, look at the work that you're trying to do. Um, you know, the professionals that are out there doing the kind of work that you want to do and compare your work to theirs and learn and, and, and grow sure. in that sense. Um, and uh, um, I think that uh, from, a, from a studying standpoint, life drawing is probably one of the more valuable things that you can do. Anyone that goes to an art school is going to get a certain amount of life drawing in under their belt, but um, keeping that sketchbook with you and drawing from, from things that you see around sure. you and people on the street is probably one of the very best ways that you can learn. Oh, I think that's fantastic advice. You guys are out there drawing. Take it to heart. Uh, thanks for joining us in the booth, Howard. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate having you. All right. It was great. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back with more magic.